Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Boone and this is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, well tonight we're going to go ahead and we're going to build something, right? <laughs> it's about time we build something for some scenery. So that's what we're going to do tonight. But before we get started on that, let me go ahead and kind of tell you exactly what we're going to build. But first off, what we're gonna build is being made by these guys right here. And this is Racetrack Scenics. And if you've not heard of Racetrack Scenics, where you been? You, you gotta, you, you, you really need to go check these guys out. So come on over, check out Racetrack Scenics. They got all sorts of stuff. They got buildings, they got gantries, they got grandstands. They all, you just, you just gotta go check it out, right? So. What we're going to be building is from Racetrack Scenics, but I'm not going to tell you what it is quite yet. No. Give you a little bit of history before we actually get into disclosing what it is that we're going to build tonight. So, the item that we're going to build tonight is from a little track up in upstate New York. Yes, the track is Watkins Glen, or the nickname, The Glen. So, what we're gonna build is from Watkins Glen. Now, if you've you've seen my videos and everything else, you've probably seen this video right here, which is the uh, Watkins Glen guardrail. So we're not building guardrail tonight, so you can scratch that one off. Already took care of that. So we're gonna actually build something else for Watkins Glen. Well, kind of cool. All right, but let's, let's do a little bit of history about Watkins Glen, right? So in 1948. After World War II, Watkins Glen had their first race, and it wasn't even on the track. It was in the country roads around the town of Watkins Glen, and it, it's said that this is one of the first premier races or sanctioned races in the United States after World War II. So that's kind of cool. Watkins Glen has quite, quite a history to it. Now, in 1952, the item that we're going to build was actually built and was part of the Watkins Glen facility, a racetrack on the roads, and it eventually got moved to the track itself. But Watkins Glen has been through all sorts of different changes and everything else. It used to host the Formula One or Grand Prix from 1961 until 1980. It hosted premier NASCAR events, Can-Am, Formula 5000, uh, Trans Am, I mean, all sorts of, of iconic racing happened at the Glen. And it even happens today. Today, we still have NASCAR, the Infinity Series. We still have IMSA that races there. They do an endurance race there. Used to do sports car endurances back in the day. So a lot of iconic names in racing have raced at the Glen. And in, in 1965, 1970, and 1972, Formula One, the drivers, or the Grand Prix, actually gave Watkins Glen the award for the best staged race in the whole entire series. So that, that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's something you can put a gold star on, right? So what are we gonna build tonight? Well, I told you it was built in 1952 cool thing about this structure is that it's still there today. I mean, it's still there. And it's not in its original place. In fact, they actually had it up, they took it down, put it in storage, and then brought it back out again because they couldn't get rid of it because it's so cool and so unique. And what is that item? Well, that item is this. And what that is, is the Flying Bridge. The Watkins Glen Flying Bridge. It's pretty unique. I mean, it's just pretty, it, it's one of a kind, right? And it's gone through a few different faceless lifts since 1952. This one right here is from 1952. 
The next one right there is when Watkins Glen went ahead and moved it to its new location, took it out of storage, dusted it all off, threw some paint on it, and put it back up. And today, it is this right here, which is the Jack Daniels whole entire motif that's going on with it. So tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to build this, okay? But we're going to build two versions of this, and we're going to build it in two different scales. So. The first one that we're gonna build is the Dunlop version, the original 1952 version. And the second version that we're gonna to build tonight is this one right here, which is the current version of it with the Jack Daniels whole entire thing going on. But we're also gonna build it in 132nd and we're gonna build it in 164th. So, <sighs> that's a lot to say, but you know what? Let's do this. Here we are, and we have our three kits sitting in front of us for the night. Now, what I have here is the 164 scale, the 132nd scale for the Dunlop version, and the brand new version that's out at the track right now, which is the Jack Daniels version. Now, there's also the other version that has the Watkins Glen. Well, don't have that one with me, but this is exactly the same, just minus the, uh, the different graphics that go on the top of it. Now, with the Dunlop version, there's one other version available. Now you'll notice that the artwork is printed on poster board or poster sheet paper, which is really nice. That's what this is. It's thicker, it's kind of like a, it's durable, it's, it's good stuff. So the other version that is available is this version right here, which I went ahead and built and what the difference is is the Dunlop on this version let me take the base plate off is actually done with wood so this is a wooden version where you actually have to punch them out of your board all the letters and everything else and paint it all up and put it together so this one requires a little bit more modeling as far as to get this all set in these little guys right here, yeah, they're a little tricky. But the nice thing is, if you can tell by this, they give you a few extras just in case it gets, uh, yeah, you know, you got a few tries at it, right? So it's nice to know that they're thinking about you. So I went ahead and got this one all together first. So I'll just set this one off to the side. We'll come back to that later on in the video. So with that, that is only available in 132nd scale. But for the 164th, you do get the poster board style. But tonight, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to build this one right here. And the reason why I'm building this and per se not that at the same time is because these two kits are pretty much very similar, okay? They have the same bits and pieces in it, but this guy right here has an added piece because if we take this apart, let's see here, we'll take that off to the side. And here is the laser cut pieces, which is really cool. It makes these things so much easier to put together. So here is the, the stair structure and there's the backing plate for the billboard portion of it. And here's the base and that structure. Now, these two boards right here, right here, are all it takes to put together this version, okay? But in the Jack Daniels version or the Watkins Glen version, you get an additional board. And what that is, is the upper structure. So that is the reason why we're building this one tonight. So what we'll do is I'll go ahead and get all our tools together and we come back We'll figure out what we need to put this bad boy together. All right? So okay, I'll be right so we're back. back. And let's go over little bits and pieces we need to put this thing together. So the real easy uh, material list or, or tool list that you need for this. So first off is our super glue. And I use the Gorilla Super Glue Gel. It's great stuff. So I'll go ahead and set that there. You need a razor knife or an X-Acto blade knife. And then I also grab a little bit of sandpaper, and this is 220 grit 3M sandpaper. And it 
We need that for when we trim it out, we can sand the edges, kind of get all the nubs off of it, just kind of dress it up a little bit. So that's pretty much all you need to go ahead and put it together. Now, also with this, there's an upper portion that has like a cable that goes on the, on the upper portion. Let me go ahead and I'll, I'll put up picture right there. <laughs> so you'll see that upper area right there and there's that cable right there. Well, that's where this comes in. And this is just a stainless steel tie wire that you can get from an auto parts store or hardware store. And I just have a little bit of this. So I will show you guys how to make cable with that. Now you don't have to do it this way. You could use string or twine or, or anything else, but we're gonna go ahead and make some cable for this thing. So let me go ahead and set that off to the side. And then as far as the paints go, with the Jack Daniels version and with the Watkins Glen version, well, they painted it the same color as the guardrails that they have. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use this, which is Rust-Oleum. And this is Satin Aqua is the, uh, is the name. So it's a satin spray and the color is Aqua. So that is the paint that I'm gonna use, but we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and prime it first. And I just like to use this automotive primer. It works, it works great for, for covering up this MDF board. So that is what we're gonna to use to go ahead and assemble that one. Now, let's go ahead and push this off to the side. Let's get that paint out of the way. If you were gonna go ahead and put together this one, everything stays the same except our colors obviously right so we're still going to use the primer to go ahead and prime it but we're going to introduce two colors to it and that is i have an antique white in the blue and this is just a straight real strong blue color that i use to go ahead and mimic what that guy was painted like and like i said there was another version on top of all that right so if we do the Dunlop, which this one is in one thirty second only, and you have to paint the yellow and the black and the red and the white. Well, you still need those two. Plus, you'll need a red for the red right up there in the D. You'll need a black, and these are all acrylics. And I found that the straw yellow works pretty good to mimic the original color of the Dunlop. So that is my little hint. If you decide to go with the wooden version for the billboard. So now that we have all that out and I've confused the heck out of you, <laughs> let's get back to putting together the Jack Daniels version. All right. So we come back, we'll go ahead and start okay. on. So let's get started on this. So I have my, my MDF all out here, not cutting anything out of it yet. All right, I'm leaving it in the packaging. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna take my primer and I'm gonna go ahead and coat all these on front and back with some primer. So when we come back, we'll go ahead and have that all primed up, all right? So I'll step away and get that primed. When we come back, everything's gonna be gray. <laughs> All right, so I have everything primed. Now I have the 164 scale right here and the 132nd scale right here, the uh, Jack Daniels bridge. And I was thinking, I'm gonna go ahead and build both of them, okay? So we're gonna build them both at the same time. The reason is, is as I started kind of thinking about it and whatnot, some of the things that we're gonna do, that I would do on the 164th, wouldn't quite be the same that I would do on the 132nd, okay? And also the kits are built just a little bit different. Being that this is a 164th, your staircase in the upper part of the gantry are one piece, okay? Where on this guy, the 132nd, there are two pieces. There's the upper portion right here and the lower is, well, let's see here, okay, no. That's the staircase, duh, that's the staircase. And this is part of the upper platform, okay? And it has the railings and 
you know, the other stuff's there as well. So it is a little bit different. So being as such, I think I really should just build them both. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna build them both. And we're probably gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attack the 164th first because we'll get it to a, a certain, yeah, we'll go, we'll attack the 164th first and get that one going. And then we'll come back to the 132nd. We'll start with small, we'll go to big, okay? So we come back, let's go ahead and let's, let's get this bad boy together. All right, so <laughs> let's go ahead and let's build this little guy first. Now, I'll go ahead and put up a reference photo right there. So there's our reference photo of, of what this guy looks like in real life. Now you'll notice it has two different colors. We have a blue and we have a white, all right? Now, so first thing I like to do, and especially with, with something this small, is let's go ahead and let's knock out all these little pieces that go up inside here from the, from the laser cut. So I like to get these guys all cleaned out, okay? So they just come right out like so, and just put them off to the side. The cool thing is, is all these little bits, and all sorts of neat shapes and that type of stuff, they can be used for other projects. So I don't know, you can call me a hoarder or whatever, but I like to hang on to that type of stuff. So I mean, yeah, I've, I've used these little things like this in all sorts of different projects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and knock out all this type of stuff and we come back, we'll get the painting process going on that 164th. All right, so I went ahead and got everything cleaned up, got those little pieces and stuff all knocked out. And then if there's any little nubs, you just go ahead and take your X-Acto blade or your razor knife, and you can come in here and just kind of knock them off a little bit. Now, I'm gonna leave these pieces in the, pack, or in the panel and not take them out right now. And the reason is, is for one thing, it's a lot easier to work with this big piece than a bunch of individual pieces, okay? So I'm kind of utilizing the packaging as a, a third set of hands here to help me out. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and do my painting with my two colors and get those parts all painted. And once that dries, we can go ahead and take them out and then trim up the edges and sand down the edges. So I'll go ahead and get these all painted out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a, a fine detail brush and just paint those out as best I can up to this point. Obviously, there's going to be some edges we're going to have to come back and touch up, but we can get the vast majority of our painting done this way. So we come back, I'll have that all done, and uh, we'll take it to the next step. Okay, so we're back, and I went ahead and got everything painted. You can see I started taking stuff out. <laughs> but I used three different colors. I used the the blue, I use the white, and then I also use the straw yellow. And the straw yellow I put onto the billboard portion of it where the Dunlop is gonna be. And on the back side, I painted it white. And the reason why I did on the yellow for the mere fact if it's off-centered a little bit or something, it's, it's not gonna have white or something showing through. It'll be a little bit of yellow on there, but I think the fit should be, should be good. And the other thing is just, I just like to be safe. I mean, if I'm putting something that's gonna be yellow on a surface, I'll go ahead and paint on the back side of it, just in case it's, you know, as far as if there's any bleed through of a different color or something like that, I'd like to paint it kind of the same shade of the artwork that I'll be putting onto it. So there is what I did with that. Now, with the pieces themselves, they have little, nubs so if i bring this up you'll see the little pin right here on the side and that's where it's attached into the board so what you'll need to do is take your exacto knife or your razor knife and find where those nubs are at and then go through and just lightly score those so to kind of knock them loose and especially with with this guy because with the small parts they're a little bit more delicate than per se like a one, you know, the 143 or even the, the 132nd. So in, with each kit, you should do the same thing. It's just, it's good just to go ahead and score it just so accidents don't happen. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this out and we come back, we'll go ahead and start putting this guy together. So at this point, since we got everything out, now we kinda of need to go around and check all the corners and stuff and make sure that the nubs, the little mounting areas, let's see here, like this guy right here on the edge, it's just a little guy hanging up. We want to go ahead and trim those out. So I'll take my razor knife and just go ahead and just scrape that just a little bit. And there's one right here on the end. And go ahead and get that one. And if they're still hanging up just a little bit, you can go ahead and kiss it lightly with the 220 sandpaper. So you can just kind of just give it just a little bit just to smooth it out and uh, it'll make fitting everything together that much easier. So it doesn't take much and it just smooths right out. So now what we need to do is go ahead and start assembling this. So when we come back, we'll go ahead and start doing that. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and assemble this. And this is one of the reasons why I decided to go ahead and build the 164th and the 132nd is little things like this because on the 132nd like you'll see this piece is actually two different pieces and on the 164th it's one single piece so what i'm going to do is go ahead and assemble this but i'm going to put it together right now without any glue and the reason for that is if you start go ahead and gluing this, especially all these different treads that go on here, the stair treads, it's, it's just gonna make things a little bit more difficult. Plus the other thing is that your glue is gonna come out and well, it's, it's gonna make a little bit more of a mess. The great thing that, that uh, they've done over at Racetrack Scenics is the fit on these things is so tight that you know you could almost assemble this thing without any glue i mean it, it fits that tight so what i'm going to do is go ahead and assemble this and then glue it afterwards and i'll show you how i'm going to do that but what we're going to do is you notice everything has a keyed pattern to it so this portion right here the flat end that has has no little key mark that's going to go out towards the end of our gantry so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and put this guy in first. And you'll notice, I mean, it's on there. <laughs> I think it's on there, that's just crazy. And then what I'll do is go ahead and put on my stair treads. And the same thing with those. I'm just gonna go ahead and push these guys in there, okay? And they'll stay right up like so. So. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and get this whole entire side on this side done, and we come back, we'll go ahead and fit the other one up on top. Okay, so now I have my stair treads in there and I have the upper platform. This part is tricky, and it's, it's tricky enough with the 132nd scale. <laughs> it, is, it is a real tricky when stuff's this small. So what I have found is that if I start with my stair treads and I start working them from the tip and just slowly start bringing it down and moving these guys into place is where I have the best success. If I start up on top here and try to bring it down, yeah, not so much. But if I work it this way, you actually can get a little bit of movement out of this MDF, a little bit of flex out of it. So it'll help you as far as lining those up. Now, I'd love to sit here and film this portion of it, but I don't know how long it's gonna take me to do this. So I will go ahead and get this on here and I'll give you guys a, a, a timestamp as far as <laughs> I'll let you know how long it took me to do it. Hopefully it's gonna go smooth. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed on this one. So when we come back, I'll have this on here and I'll, <laughs> I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, <laughs> so we're back. Let me get these guys out of the way. Now, I went ahead and I got the one side all in there and it it looks pretty cool. I mean, the way it's all together. Now the, the stair treads, there's some extras here. 
And the stair treads are keyed, so they fit right into these little notches and lock right in. The nice thing about Racetrack Scenic stuff is that the fit is really, really snug. I mean, it's real snug. On the 132nd, when I put that together, I fit everything together and it didn't even need any glue because it was so taunt. Now with the, the 164th, I went ahead and already glued this side on it when it was down just so it didn't come apart because it took me about 10 minutes just to get this little guy set right here. It was kind of tedious, like I said. It, it, I don't know how long it was going to take me. Well, it took me about 10 minutes to do it. Now, everything is keyed in such a way, and the lower platform has the nub that sticks out, out away from it. And the reason for that is the end piece goes right on like so. So... I've already got this side done. Now we come back over to this side. And like I said, I, I didn't use any glue on it when I initially put it together because if you have glue and you're trying to, you know, work it around, you're just going to start getting on your hands and everything else. And I have what? This is Danish oil on my hands right now. I can't get off. So I don't want to put any anything else on there too, you know? So... What I did is go ahead and set this down. I got that finish panel, which is this guy, glued onto that one side. Now what we need to do is this side isn't glued yet. So I'll just take my, my super glue here. And then on each one of these treads, I'm just going to go ahead and put a little dab right there on the end. So just to lock them into place. So I'm just going to put a little tiny dab on each one and then just go ahead and set this guy on there. So when we come back, I'll have that on there, and I'll go ahead and put this guy on the end, and this portion of it, the main portion, will be complete. All right, so we're back. I did not put this guy on. Well, I started to, and I took him back off, and the reason for that is this guy has got to slide on here, okay? This is the upper support, so got to put this guy on first, before we put our end cap on. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get him slid on here. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tight fit, and I know it is. Yes, it is, it's a tight fit. So, slide him back to where he's supposed to go, which is right up in here, and it's keyed right here on the bottom. So, I'm gonna get him kinda set here to a certain part, now I'm going to go ahead and glue this guy on the end of it. And when we come back, we can get the rest of this all set into okay. place. So we're back. I went ahead. This is dry enough now. Now we need to go ahead and set this portion of it, this, the bottom structure. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take a little bit of super glue and just put down here right at this little keyway on both sides. And then pull this guy back just a little bit. So we'll get that one there. And now we need to set him, it's so tight, set him right into this area. So he'll set right into here somehow. There it is, okay. So it's set, kinda, no, there it goes. It's set, Oh, sorry, hit the camera. So, now I got that there. Now what I need to do is take this guy and get him set right into this keyway. And on this part, we kind of want to be, don't want our glue to totally dry because we still need it to be pliable. So now I'll set him right here. And now we have this down at the bottom. So we have this, these pieces, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and get these guys set right down into here. So there's that. goes right into that side. And then, whoop, he came off. So let's see here. So he's there. Let me hold him. I'm going to come over and get him there like so. Now what I can do is put a little dab of glue 
on both of these. So let's put some right here, right there, and then take just a little bit of a stick here so I can work it down in there and kind of pull it off a little bit, smooth it out. Okay. And then I'll let this one dry now that I have them both set. And then when that dries, I'll go ahead and do the other side. And then our, uh, our flying bridge is almost complete. All right. So there it is. It's all glued together. And I went ahead and just lightly placed it onto the baseboard they have here. I didn't glue it in. It's just setting onto it. And it kind of locks into place. It's kind of cool. You can lock it in there and move it around. Now, when I finally do mount this on the HO layout, I'm not going to use the lower plate. I'm actually just going to take this off and set it into the scenery itself. Um, this lower plate, if you wanted to go ahead and use that, you could and just go ahead and set it in there and maybe put some static grass on it or make it look like concrete or whatnot. But uh, for me, I'm just going to go ahead and use this just to go ahead and set it down and, and work with it. it. Makes it a lot easier that way. But everything's dry, so now what I need to do is go ahead and do all my touch-ups on this, the white and the blue. And then once that is done, we need to make some cables that come up here on this one side. So when we come back, I'll have it all painted, and then we'll go ahead and attack these cables. All right, so a little change of scenery. I'm over here by the workbench and for our next step. So I got the gantry and it's a flying bridge and it's all touched up. And if you notice, I went ahead and added the cable on this side. Now, if you turn it over, you can see there's a, a hole up on top. There's one right here at the top of the stairs. And then there's one right over here towards the front of it. Now, what we need to do is string a cable through that area to finish it all off. Now, at the beginning of the video, I went ahead and showed you this wire, this tie wire that we have. So that's what we're gonna make our cable out of. So I went ahead and just measured out a, a piece here of a wire. <laughs> so it's roughly probably about 18 inches long. I'm gonna just go ahead and fold that over. And what we're gonna do is on the end here, I'm actually going to just kind of wrap this together. So it's like so, all right? So then we have it side by side and for the 164 scale we can only use two wire for the 132 we can add multiple wires in here to give it a really cool effect but it still has a cool effect with two wires so what i'm gonna do is just go ahead and stick it in the end of this vise and if you had you could do this with uh, vice grips you just need something to hold the one side taunt so that it doesn't come loose and spin on you because what we're going to need to do is twist this top this wire so we have that and now i'm going to go ahead and grab this little screwdriver stick it through the ends right here and then just go ahead and start turning it and as you turn it it'll start to twist these wires together and we'll get ourselves a cable so <laughs> I'm going to keep on doing this. We come back. I swear, I'll have a cable made, and we'll go ahead and put it in that. Okay, so we're back over on the, on the table here. And you might want to go ahead and clean out these two holes before we try to do this. So I just have myself a little bit of a sharp punch here. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this in and just kind of remount these holes a little bit make sure that they're they're cleared up of any debris or anything else so that's kind of a a little tip there for you just it you know if there's something in there and you get to this point it's better just to clear it out right so what we got here is we have our cable and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and take the end of this so this end right down here and at the very end i'm going to go ahead and take these needle nose and just turn it right over so i create a 90 degree angle right there so just kind of a little elbow there and we'll go ahead and 
get this through here and just go ahead and stick it right in that one side like so. So it's right in there. Now we just need to come up, bring it up here, bend it straight over, okay? And bring it right down to this area. And then when you cut it, cut it just a little bit past, okay? So there's our hole, we cut about right here. And again, let me go ahead and get that off to the side. Put this one there. This guy comes down here. And then what we want to do, he does not want to stay in there right now. So we'll get him there. All right. So then the same thing over here. We'll get just the very end of that. And then we'll just go ahead and put a 90 degree angle on it. So just like so, maybe a little bit further. There we go. And now we can do is hook that one in there, bring this one on over here, and maybe I'll start with the back side first. I think I went ahead and I made that a little bit too sharp. So I'm just gonna relax it just a little bit so I can get it in that hole right there the tight fit so there we got that one in there and now I just bring this guy over put him there and there we go we got ourselves our cables for the upper side now we just need to do is go ahead and glue on our billboards here for the uh, Dunlop and get that all squared away. Okay, so we come back, I'll uh, see what it looks okay, like. Okay, so at this point, I went ahead and stuck the, the billboard portion on that, got that all glued in, all right? And then what you do is you go ahead and slice out your Dunlop down there and you use your razor knife, the stuff really cuts nice. And then take a little bit of PVA, Maj Paj, and stick it on there and there you go looks pretty cool so here is the 164th now let's go ahead and let's build the jack daniels 132nd scale flying bridge all right so here we go now last time we saw this kit i had just primed it and then we decided or i decided that i was going to go ahead and build the 164th as well so Here's the Jack Daniel sign, so we'll put that off to the side, and it's all in primer. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna spray it with this aqua, and uh, yeah. So when we come back, she'll be all painted, and we'll start putting this bad boy together. Okay, so we're back, and I got everything painted, and went ahead and cut it all out of the board, and got it all set out on the table. Now. You'll notice that some of these have a little bit of black on them, and that's the area that's gonna be facing out that we're actually gonna put the Jack Daniels um, uh, artwork on the outside of it. So I have the inside painted the aqua, and then the outside painted black, and it's just on a couple pieces right here, and then the roof pieces that are over here as well. Now, when you're when you're taking this thing out of its packaging as far as the, the the board that they do the laser cut with make sure you just spend a little extra time and make sure you cut all those little tabs that hold it together and on these guys right here on the back side of the board let me grab the board real quick On the back side of this board make sure that you scribe down the back side of these okay so just I mean it's it's a delicate piece and you need all four to complete the project and you don't need to have any mishaps when you're taking it apart even by scribing just a little bit they're so delicate in certain areas I did have a little bit of a, a trauma on on a couple of them so just FYI, as far as that goes, take extra caution taking out these upper supports right here. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start putting together the stairs. And when I come back, 
we'll go ahead and get them all mounted up. There's a little bit of a trick that I learned through the last one that I did that I wanna share with you guys on this one. So we come back, we'll start on those stairs. Okay, so we're back. You notice I got a hammer with me, <laughs> an old body hammer. Um, so what we're gonna do with the stairs, okay, there's 20 treads on this thing and they fit very, very nicely, okay? You can see, I mean, they're, I hadn't even put glue on this thing and it's, it's staying together, okay? So being that it's such a tight fit, if you try to take this piece and just set it on here and work it on, it's gonna be, well, you're gonna take a chance of actually damaging the part because, you know, MDF is only so strong. So what I found with the last one is I'm gonna go ahead and line this up. And again, I'm gonna kind of do it at an angle. So I'm gonna take the, the bottom end and I'm gonna line these guys up just a little bit and then take my hammer and just lightly tap. And we'll just kind of persuade these into in there. Okay, so we go ahead and get them started. And what this will do is we'll just slowly start working it in. So holding it there, tap a little bit more, and let me go ahead and bring this up. And you'll see how it's just kind of setting in there and then how it's up, okay? So just kind of work your way down, line up your treads, take a light hammer and just lightly tap on that to help them just kind of get in there because if you try to muscle this down through, well, <laughs> this way is a little bit easier. So when we come back, I'll have this all done. And then there's one other trick I wanna show you as far as putting on the upper back, platform. And I have my stair treads and everything all mounted in. And then you'll notice I went ahead and put the finish boards on both sides. Now, there's a reason why I did that. So if you notice, if you put this on, it's it has a little bit of an elevation right here okay so stay with me on this <laughs> so if you go ahead and set this on the side take your side piece for the upper panel and take your base plate okay the base plate that this actually mounts onto so what we're going to use is we're going to use this as a little bit of a a uh, little bit of dunnage underneath it to raise it up just a little bit and the reason behind that is that when we go to glue these two pieces together that it's not sitting flush as far as if you set it down on its side on your table in a little bit of glue gun on the outside of it well it's going to stick to your table so if we can go ahead and set it like this and then go like that you can see that it's going to stay up off the table just just like just a hair you know 16th of an inch so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and glue this on real quick. So just go, stay with me here. So we're just gonna put a little bit of glue on this. And, uh, all right, so I got some glue on there. And then we're just gonna go ahead and slide that into the keyway right there. And get it all kind of lined up nice. And just kind of wipe this on the top so it doesn't have any anything sticking out there. Now, we got that there. Now go ahead and build your upper platform to it, okay? If you build this separately, okay? So say we didn't attach it to this and we built it separately, you're gonna run into an issue because let me get this put together here. And it's so tight. Actually, I'll just hold it. <laughs> it's so tight. So if you were to build this separately and then try to mount it to that, you're gonna have issues trying to get it to lock or get it to mount because you have this keyway and then you're gonna be tweaking it and everything else trying to get it on there. So the easiest way to do this is to build the staircase, then go ahead and lay this down and start building on top of this. Put your platform in and then go ahead and set this guy up on top, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and when we come back, well, when we come back, everything's pretty much the same as far as the little 164th that we did as far as putting in these, these upper supports. So I'll get it to that point 
And when we come back, we need to go ahead. Well, we got to do our wire and we got to put the roof on. So we come back, we'll get ready for okay, our cable. So at this point, I went ahead and I got the wires on and everything's all mounted up. Now, you might be wondering why I went ahead and twisted my own cable instead of going out and purchasing, say, just some really light cable. Well, the problem is, is that this cable, okay, so you like picture frame, you know, hanging type of wire or whatever. The problem is with it, you can't get it to go on a 90. And then the other thing is that you can't get it to really get taunt, all right? So you could use this, but it's gonna have kind of a relaxed look to it and it's not gonna look like it's under pressure, like it's, you know, it's doing something. It's gonna have kind of a bow to it. So the nice thing about wire, the tie wire, and then making your own cable is that you can take this and bend it into 90s or whatever and you can have it looking nice and straight so it looks like it's under pressure it's actually it's doing something right so just kind of pointing that out because some of you guys might be going boom why didn't you use that you know this type of stuff well that's the reason why because i can't get the same type of look with this that i can with by making my own with with wire so go ahead and set that off to the side now what we have left is to go ahead and mount our upper structure as far as the roof so these are the pieces right here and like i said i went ahead and painted one side black and one side the aqua and then we have our upper supports and it's pretty straightforward i mean you have this is your upper girder that goes across or or beam and then these guys will go on to the ends like this, and then these guys slide down over the top like so. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and get this all put together, and get it mounted, and we come back, we'll take it to uh, the next all right. step. So I went ahead and I have the roof structure all put onto it, and it's ready for touch up. Now, if you notice right down in here, I have a little bit of white right here. And what that is, is a little bit of filler. And I actually just used some spackling, or you could use some joint compound, and then just go ahead and fill in the little bit of a keyway and this little bit of a gap where it had where um, the floor mounts into the side. Now, you can do that, and then when you brush touch it, you go ahead and you won't see any of that stuff right there. Now over here on this, right in here, this is covered up by the billboard that goes through that area. So we can just go ahead and touch that up and it'll be fine. Now down here at the bottom, you'll see two more. And I haven't done those and I'm not going to because on the actual structure, if you look at the pictures, you'll see that it has these two marks on the actual structure itself. So kind of authentic, pretty cool. So, that's that. Now, if you noticed, when I went ahead and showed you guys these upper supports, let me grab that board real quick. You notice that these have been brushed, right? And I was, I was going outside to go ahead and spray all this. Well, I, I have a new helper around the garage, his name's Skidmark, and I figured, you know, how hard can it be? I'll just send him out there with the can and he can go ahead and spray it, you know? I mean, otherwise, he just he's just been sitting here all night staring at me, so I was like, I, I gotta give this guy something to do. So I went ahead and I sent him out there. Well, we're supposed to spray it. Next thing I know is he comes in and only some of it's sprayed and the other stuff isn't sprayed. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, what's going on? And you know, he doesn't say nothing. All he does is kind of shrug his shoulders and hand me the can. It's like, are, are you're killing me here. So, you know, it was kind of late and everything else. So I'm not able to make it to the store to buy another can. So what I did was I went ahead. Let me set this off to the side. I'll bring the can out here. And here's the can, right? And all the propellant, he used all the propellant out of it, but it still had material in the inside of it. So 
What do you do in this type of situation? Well, no worry, you can still get the material out of this can. What you need to do is go ahead and drain the rest of the propellant. So, you know, go ahead and, and pull the, the top down and it might sputter or whatever, but just drain as much of the propellant as you can out of it, the pressure. And then what I do is I take a small little punch. So I take a small little punch, I put it in here and hit it with a hammer and then make a real tiny hole and just kind of work this work this back and forth like that and let out the rest of the propellant out of the can. Now, if you let it out and just let it drain all it real, real quick, what'll happen is that since the propellant in the inside starts rushing out, it'll start to actually freeze the can. So you don't wanna do that because it can affect the paint that's in the inside of it. But if you go ahead and just work it out slowly until all that propellant's gone, then what you can do is go ahead and drill a hole into it, right? And then you can go ahead and pour out the rest of the paint. But before you pour out the paint, go ahead and set this off to the side and let it warm up, okay? Because the paint in the inside of it is going to be really cold, okay? And if you introduce that to regular uh, room temperature, it just... <laughs> It just explodes. It comes out, foams all up and everything else. Hence, the little bit of stain that's here. Yeah, well, that, that was from that because I got a little ahead of myself and thought, eh, it should be warm enough and try to pour it out. Yeah, well, it foamed out, made a mess. So what you do is go ahead and set this off to the side. Let it sit there for a while. You could also take some warm water and put this into some warm water to help warm up the paint and everything in the inside of it. And then once it's all warmed up to room temp, you can go ahead and pour it out and then you can go ahead and brush it. So if your can is still good, okay, and you didn't go through, you, you don't have a sidekick that, that ruined your can of paint, you can go ahead and spray some of this into a container and then use that to do the remainder of your brush touching on this and regular on your touch-ups. So it's kind of funny. I went ahead and I put a camera outside just because I, you know, I don't know about this guy yet. So I went ahead and put a camera outside and I'll put the clip up of what I found, what happened, right? So yeah, there's always something going on around here. I don't know. You know, this guy, I swear, I'm going to pull my hair out. I don't know what to do with him. So I hope he can drive better than he can do modeling. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. So I'll go ahead and put that clip up. And we come back, we'll finish off that flying bridge. Okay, so at this point, I want to do just a little bit of weathering on it. I mean, I know that it's supposed to be like all <laughs> the modern version of it and everything else, but I don't know, it looks too perfect. So I just want to go ahead and just lightly kind of tarnish some of the areas on it. So what I have here is some Watco Danish oil. And what I'm going to do with this is go ahead and put it on my cables and what this is going to do is just kind of kind of dull them down a little bit and look like like maybe there's a little bit of rust inside there so that they you know they aren't so brilliant looking and just 
lightly hit this. And the cool thing about the, the oil is that it's gonna get into the little strands of, of wire and it's gonna kind of weep around inside those. So it just kind of, it does a lot of the work for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of this on here and it just, you know, just kind of gives it a little bit more of a realism with it. So you know, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it just kind of weeps into there. So that's what I'm gonna do with that. And then the other is that I have a little bit of burnt umber here, and this is an acrylic. And what I'm gonna do is just a little bit of dry brushing. So if I can get this stuff out, oh, there we go, got plenty out. So what I have here is just a little board and I'm gonna do just a little bit of dry brush with this. And this is just gonna go ahead and just kind of give a little bit of, little bit of wear. So if they're going up the steps, you know, right now they're all nice and brilliant. Let's just go ahead and let's just give it just a little bit of, you know, little bit of wear in here you know so it looks like it's more than one person has gone up in here right so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit some of that on the on the stair treads maybe a little here on the railing just lightly kiss it bring it down just kind of just kind of give it a little bit of a little bit of age to it so it doesn't look so brilliant and yeah, I'm just going to go around, do a little bit of weathering on this. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and get that Jack Daniels signature and artwork all up here on our gantry. All right, so here it is. I have the Jack Daniels signage all on it. But let's go ahead and rotate it over real quick. And it was pretty easy to go ahead and put this on. But there is one thing that I did notice. So... Where the cable comes up and it comes through that little eyelet right up here on top. If you notice, I went ahead and cut that at the same angle as the roof. And why that is, is because the end of this sticks out a little bit far when you're trying to put the artwork up on top. It hits on that and kind of bows it over. So if you go ahead and trim this back, it still protrudes just a little bit, but it's not nearly as much as it was before. So you can actually get it to, to lay down, which I did on the other side over here. So you can see that, yeah, that's not very bad at all as far as that goes, but you just have to go ahead and trim that one down just a hair. And then also I want to go ahead and point out is that when you trim this, there might be a little bit of a white edge on this around the sides. Just go ahead and take some flat black acrylic paint and just lightly touch your brush on the side of that and it'll make that go away. So kind of a cool little tip there. Now to go ahead and put this on, what I'm doing is just take a little bit of Mod Podge and just put on the tops of these stringers right here and just go ahead and glue that on. So works pretty cool. And uh, again, you can see where I painted all these little areas black. Well, this perfect little thing for this because if your cuts aren't quite right up on here and if that was a different color, it would shine through. But being that it's black, it blends right in. So kind of tricks the eye a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and finish this up and uh, yeah. We'll call this video a wrap.
there we go. Another successful video complete. And we built some stuff for the layout. How about that? It's, it's, it's good to be back rolling into the scenery thing. So with all that, if you haven't checked out Racetrack Scenics yet, by the end of this, you really need to go check them out. So here's their website right here. Check these guys out. I mean, again, they have grandstands and billboards and gantries and they're all sorts of cool stuff and the thing is is they keep on producing stuff it seems like weekly i mean if you haven't been to their website in a month i guarantee if you go in there after this video and check it out there'll be new stuff in there that you haven't seen yet so definitely definitely go check out racetrack scenics and these kits were really fun to put together, easy to put together, and they fit together so snug. I mean, there's certain areas in there that glue is questionable. I mean, really, I mean, but you know, I like to have glue and stuff, just, you know, just that, that peace of mind that I know that if something happens, it's not gonna fall apart. So, yes, <laughs> it's a good thing. In fact, at the end of this clip, I'll go ahead and put some of the shots down when I was trying to do the flyover with everything. It was windy outside and uh, yeah, it was kind of hard to keep them upright. So if there's any question as far as durability of their kits, you, you want to check this out. But saying all that, if you like this video, like it, share it with others, and please subscribe to my channel. And we also have that, which is the Facebook group, and that, which is the Instagram group, and, <laughs> and we have the Buy Me A Coffee app, plus we have the Patreon. And the Patreon is really cool. You need to go over there and check it out. You know, you'll find it in the About page. So the About page on the YouTube channel. If you go down there, you'll see the Patreon. Click on the Patreon, go check it out. So. It's kind of cool. I am able to, to, to interact with you guys a lot easier with that. You get to see certain things that I'm working on before it actually comes out. Plus the other thing is you have 24 hour access to anything prior to it coming out on YouTube channel. And we have certain benefits in there as far as t-shirts, we got sweatshirts, we got coffee mugs, there's all sorts of different stuff. And there is a discount, a 20% discount to Racetrack Scenics in the Patreon group. And it's a lifetime code. So it's not like a one-time thing. Now, as long as you're a Patreon to Boone Slot Car Garage, you get 20% off any purchase with Racetrack Scenics. So that's kind of cool all by itself. So with all that, yeah, it was kind of fun. And, oh yes, and, and, we have that guy, that skid mark guy. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But I'll figure it out, right? <sighs> yeah, he's testing my patience. <laughs> All right, guys. So next time on Boone Slot Car Garage, you know, we got to start doing some more scenery. And I just received a bunch of static grass. So we really need to start doing some scenery now. All right. So until then, I'll see you guys later. This is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this.